welcome back. It is the Danny Dot Podcast. Uh, this is my 50th episode. Coming to you out of two whole seasons. Um, your girl is very proud of that accomplishment because that just meant that I turned up on most Tuesdays out of uh, this 2024 season. And um, we are successfully at the end of the season. So lots and lots to discuss. Uh, as I have announced that this is my blind date episode, that date did happen. Uh, I can't wait to bring you all the news and gossip about that. So much commentary and oh, advice was given in the lead up. It was unbelievable. And I'm so happy to have you all in my corner about this. Um, obviously there's some huge reflections coming out of season two and where we started back in, uh, February, I think it was to where we are now coming up to the middle of September. I have realized that I am a winter podcaster, um, down here in little old South Island, New Zealand, we have been going through not the worst winter, but it is especially cold today. And I enjoy the fact that when I have these little micro breaks, you can tell that it's the Northern Hemisphere that's catching up with us. Obviously, they're going through summer. They're all busy, ra di ra. All of my people that are normally very consistent with listening to me, right on the money. I mean, within you know an hour of me posting the pod at about three o'clock New Zealand time, there's about sixty to a hundred people that have already downloaded and listening. So, just for actual context here, that's uh, like a crazy amount just to have people that are on the dial and they want to know what's been going on in my life, which. I mean, this is not really a podcast about a specific topic, even though I try and fill a little bit of a half hour gap with something to talk about. Most of it's about my life <laughs> and the growth and reflection on season two and how much I've really like been honest about. I've even surprised myself. And it's crazy because when people said, oh, you should have a podcast, I was all for it. And then I had it and I was like, oh my God, what do I talk about? So Honestly, my consistency in turning up with topics to discuss and actually have a lot of like interest in has been my favorite achievement. It, it just, it makes me so happy. Um, in saying that, when I entered 2024, there was absolutely no reason for me to be dating. It was not on my radar. What was that about? So to actually be finishing on episode number 50 and be talking about this, Wow. Um, <laughs> where did that come from? Anyway, uh, I have had like a two-week hiatus, as we've discussed. Um, it's weird because when I was kind of breaking down the whole, you know, last episode and everything else, I was going through a bit of a heartache myself. Um, there was a guy who, I don't really know if I talked about it too much. Uh, we were friends for about two and a half years. And in that two and a half years, Nothing happened until the last sort of eight weeks. Anyway, he turned out to be an emotionally unavailable salmon, um, broke my heart, and that's the end of that. When that all went down was when I picked up the book by Tilly Cole, A Thousand Boy Kisses. Last night, I finished the book, which to me is crazy because that means that in two weeks, I have managed to finish upwards of 300 pages and that's something that I would never have say, said that I could do. Never in a million years. So this book was somewhat captivating and I really recommend it. It's probably a 9 out of 10 on my favorite like books to read. It was easy. And if you're looking for something that you can just fall into, this is it. So the story was quite captivating and there was three times that I cried. The last couple of pages was ugly crying. Like, oh my gosh, ugly, ugly, ugly so sad, did not see that coming, oh my gosh, it's kind of bewildered me, I'm sitting here and I'm thinking, oh my god, what next, <laughs> and I haven't had a feeling like that in a long, long time, so, but that book in its own, I mean, I've told you this a million times, you've got to trust the process, everything happens for a reason, I picked this book up two weeks ago and I was going through some heartbreak, read the book, finished the book, right now, I am feeling so good about so many things moving into um, other areas of my life. In saying that, this book is about a romantic situation. So obviously what I'm looking for and what I've kind of noticed recently is that I'm looking for a bit of like romanticizing love. It's weird because that book really like showed me what you could actually have in life if you went for it. So yeah, it 
It's just really thrown me a little bit, guys. And I totally recommend if you haven't picked up A Thousand Boy Kisses by Tilly Carl, go get it. Download it on your Kindles, put it on your books to read list. I don't even know. This is one to remind you that love exists. And I'm going head first into this, baby. <laughs> so, um, Obviously, we're going to knock this podcast off at the end, and then I'm going to go on a bit of a summer break. I've got so much planned. So far, I think four trips. Next year is filling up so fast. I am actually on in the process right now of booking like a, a trip that doesn't really have a return date, and I'm quite excited. Basically, it started out as being... Um, Upwards of 27 days, I want to cruise from Sydney or Brisbane to Singapore. I want to fly into Bangkok, travel some of Asia, and then fly back via Bali with a couple of friends. And it's going to be a big goddamn trip, and I'm so excited that I'll be podcasting my way around all these types of environments to bring you some weird chaos. But that is going to be a big part of season three, and um, yeah, we're all going to be a part of this together, okay? So... That is um, what to expect, and I'll probably come back to you about February-ish. Who knows what's going to happen in the coming months? I was catching up with a friend the other day, and I was talking about we've got Bathurst, which is like a car racing significant day here in uh, New Zealand and Australia, the V8 supercars. We've got Crate Day, which symbolizes the first uh, weekend in summer. I think it's December 7, so that's a big deal where everyone gets around and has a bit of a party. Um, you've got Halloween, Oktoberfest, oh, the usuals, Christmas, New Year's, so many things about to fill our voids. It's going to be crazy good summers down here in this uh, Southern Hemisphere, that's for sure. So never fear, I will be back. Um, let's just say that we're going to grow on what we've learned in season two and really like start to expand and be more open um, and honest I think a few times I've obviously like name dropped. Oh, no, I haven't really name dropped, but I, I guess I sort of backtrack a little bit because it's a small town and I don't want certain people to figure out who I'm talking about. It's still my life at the end of the day and I'm being brutally honest. So <laughs> um, some of these stories I have been talking about is probably like 60% of what actually happened. There is always an extra portion that I keep to myself just because... I get a little bit nervous and a bit shy, but um, <clears throat> let's just say season three is going to be a bit more exposed, more honest, open, upfront. It'll be great. I don't know what it looks like, but it'll be something worth tuning in for, that's for sure. So obviously uh, on Saturday was the blind date. This is what we're all here for. <laughs> let's not dilly around anymore. Um, so a bit of context around this blind date was... Um, a friend of mine from high school, 24 years ago, his sister knew a guy. And about six to eight weeks ago, I met her and she didn't know me from school. She had a friend and she was like, I'm going to set you up on a blind date. And I kind of like talked about it a little bit more and I was thinking, oh my God, I've never actually been on like a situation like this. I'm not nervous because I have a podcast. I talk to people all the time. I'm easily approachable. I always have conversations to talk about. It's not like I'm not awkward with these kinds of things. So there was zero, um, uh, I don't know. I, I just was not nervous. So it was fine. Anyway, fast forward six weeks, this date turned into being like a little bit of a tack on to her daughter's fifth birthday, which is fine. I was like, okay, so there's going to be 25 kids at a bowling alley and then randomly I'm going to meet a guy and we're going to go off and have a drink. It'll be fine. It's a blind date. <laughs> I was like kind of prepared. In my mind, I was like, I'm just going to wing it. I'm going to um, obviously spend the week beforehand judging myself up, getting myself out of my work from home attire, putting on some fake tan, the weather turned, it snowed, I barely wanted to get out of my track pants. It was like the worst scenario. <laughs> the day, I think it was the Friday morning, I went to the gym and I had a massive like run on the treadmill. I sweated everything out. I thought, oh, this is going to be really great. I'm going to have an everything shower. You know, I've always talked about them. They are great. You shave your legs, you put on your fake tan, you exfoliate, you um, like do all the things that make you feel good and special. Wow. 
Friday night was the Rock 2000 countdown. I was prepared, but not prepared. <laughs> um, I went out, as I do, and uh, I don't know, there's something really like rock about drinking whiskey and Coke with the boys. And it just so happened that I was standing amongst a table of about 10 lads and someone got the shits with me because, I don't know, maybe it was because I was looking amazing. I felt amazing, that's for sure. I had a six-step hair care routine that morning. Like, my hair was fire. It was stunning. Um, I had these bright red lips on. I had this T-shirt that had these two skeleton hands that were holding my boobs in bright red. I mean, I was like full on rock, you know? And, uh, this guy randomly says to me, how old are you? And I was like, oh, I'm 37. How old are you? And he says, oh, I'm 52. And I'm like, oh, <laughs> cool. Like that's kind of a little bit younger than my mom, but he's still like half decent. Anyway, um, he announced to the whole table, oh, she's 37. She's about to start menopause. Don't anyone go near her. She's about to get ugly. And I was like, are you joking? <laughs> Oh my gosh, I turned into like almost like a rabid chihuahua. I could not hold back. I just let him have it. I was like, why would you say that? I've basically not done anything wrong. I'm just, you know, how can you make a decision about my body? This is something that you've really like upset me with. Ra -ra. Over the space of an hour, he tried to approach me twice to apologize for his behavior and I just wasn't going to have it. I didn't want him near me because I didn't want him to say any further to dig himself any further into that hole, you know? So I was standing at the bar with a friend of mine and just, you know, having a bit of a catch up drink. He's more like a father figure. And he was telling me his ideas about my blind date. He was so excited for me. He was just giving me all his advice. And I was so enjoying this conversation until this other bloke comes along and apologizes. And he says to me, my wife's going through menopause and she's an absolute bitch right now. So I'm sorry if I'm deflecting. And I looked at him and I said, are you kidding? She probably needs all your support right now. And you're too busy saying she's about to get ugly. And, you know, hoping that other females don't turn into a version of your wife. Quite frankly, I'm standing here amongst 10, 10 blokes and you've made me feel like a piece of shit. But also you cannot make comment on my body. And it's just, it's distraught. I've, I've turned into like, you know, not even wanting to be here. And these are people that I want to spend time with. More so, and this was not something that I needed to discuss with him, but I felt like I should. I'm about to go on a date tomorrow, which is something that I have not done for almost 20 years. I've never once felt like I should be worthy of love or meeting a guy or doing any such thing. And so for you to say that cuts me completely off. And so he brought me a, two drinks and then he scurried off home <laughs> and I was feeling so like low I don't know it was weird because I'd gone into this night so fired up like I felt a million bucks I'd done everything I thought that I could do in preparation for this date I was feeling so positive and happy and healthy in myself I was like if this guy that I meet on Saturday doesn't love me or <laughs> loves the strong word doesn't like my company that's fine but you've got to put yourself out there to meet people and if there's blokes like that going around saying things like that, no, nah, no, nah, I'm going to recluse and turn into an absolute hermit. <laughs> I'm going to be the crazy cat lady if men are going to be like that. Anyway, the next morning I get this phone call at like, well, I woke up at seven to start getting ready and I was dusty. I mean, no iced coffee, no energy drink, no Maccas in Queenstown was going to fix this. I was whiskey hungover. Um, and I was told that the car was going to come around at 10 a.m. to pick me up. So I dived out of bed. I tried to sort myself out. I was not <laughs> feeling very well. Not in a, oh, I wrote myself off the night before, but just in a miserable downward sort of feeling from the night before from old mate and his comment. I had to sort of perk myself up, give myself a bit of a pep talk as, as you will. Anyway, the car pulls in. Um, we go over to Queenstown, get the Maccas. Maccas isn't bloody sorting me out, that's for sure. No hash browns is going to sort this. <laughs> uh, we get over to Strike Bowl, which is where we were going to have this date. And uh, we started setting up for this child's birthday, which was something I, I text my mum and I said, 
I was so focused on the date. I wasn't focused on the fact that I had to set up for 25 kids party at the venue before I even went on the damn date. (laughs) So I was sitting there trying to blow up about 15 balloons that had Pokemons on them. As an absolute deflated lunatic that I was, I, I had no air in my lungs. I was just completely hung over. Um, so I grabbed a glass of rosé. This is barely 11 in the morning. <clears throat> Everyone else was drinking. All the parents were drinking red Smirnoff. So I thought I'd be classy and have a little glass of rosé. And I'm sitting down the end where the adult section is, away from all the kiddies. And my friend comes up to me and says, see that guy talking to... Um, the wee girl's mum, whose birthday it was, her husband. That that's uh, the guy that you're going to be on the date with. And my mouth, you guys hit the floor. I was like, "Are you kidding me?" I I literally met this chick for ten minutes, and she's telling me she has a guy to set me up with. And then I get eyes on the guy, and I'm like, "Holy shit! How does she know that I was interested in that kind of a guy?" I mean. I never once said I was attracted to Aquaman, but there's like a brunette version Aquaman minus the ponytail standing right there, like not a word of a lie. And I was a little bit giddy. I was excited. I was like, I have to walk past him to get to the toilet to go and freshen up to come back and feel better about myself. (laughs) Um, But no, honestly, I sucked it up and I went outside and uh, I just sort of like gathered myself a little bit. I was like, okay, this is happening. This is happening. So I came back into the venue and everything was perfect and uh, we started talking. He's got this really like big belly laugh, which is just, I, I said to a few people, I can't work out if he thinks I'm funny or he's just laughing because he's nervous. But the laugh makes me laugh because I'm like, that's that's coming out of his tummy. Like that's going somewhere, <laughs> you know? Um And it was a really lovely, like, one and a half, two hours of just sort of yarning with this bloke. He's got so much, like, give, if I could make that comment. Like, I suppose everyone does. But I just felt really at ease. And we had really great banter, I suppose. But I sort of was, like, looking at him. And I couldn't work out if I was attracted to him or I just, I was overwhelmed by the whole thing, to be fair. So we we went back outside when they were packing up all the kitty stuff and, after we played out bowling and everything, it was really a lovely like environment. I mean, nothing was untoward or awkward. And um, I asked if he wanted to go over to the gin garden at Broken Heart, which is in Arthur's Point, and just sort of have a gin. But I think they were closing or we had to go. Anyway, we were all getting into the cars to leave the venue and the chickies that whose birthday it was, her mum pulls up in this car and she says, Danny, get in. And I just like dove in the back seat of this car and lo and behold, who's sitting next to me but the date. <laughs> and I remembered back at the um, Friday night drinks, the advice I was being given by a father figure. And he says to me, oh, Danny, if you're ever in the back seat of the car with the date, just chuck your hand down his pants and tell him what's up. <laughs> All of a sudden, I was in the back seat of the car with this guy. You couldn't make this shit up. Only we were only two minutes away from the house that we were going to, so there was no chucking the hands down his pants. And quite frankly, I am not confident enough to do that. So, um, we'll just say yeah anyway. <laughs> so we pull up to this house and we're having this barbecue until like I mean I had been in Queenstown since ten a.m. and we left Queenstown to go back to Cromwell. Um, at about 10 at night. So it was a full on day. And as I was leaving the house after this barbecue and and many a drinks, the conversation kind of came round to, do you want to see him again? Do you want to swap numbers? Do you think he's cute? He's standing right there. And I looked at him dead in the the eye and I said, oh no, he's cute. Like, yeah, no, a hundred percent. Do you want my number? Like, we'll just swap numbers now and we'll get talking. Um, so all in all, like I would say seven, eight out of 10 for the whole experience. Like it was fine. I don't know if I feel giddy or like romantic with the guy. We have a lot in common, but on Saturday, uh, Sunday morning, I messaged to say thanks for inviting me to this uh, date situation kind of thing to the chickie who's um, organized the whole thing. And she said to me, oh, just a word of warning though. He he does want kids. So you're going to put your skates on there, Danny. <laughs> I was like, oh, wouldn't that just 
rail mum up because honestly she wants me to have a kid like more than anything um and I just thought, what an unusual thing to say out of meeting someone. Oh, yeah, but he wants to have babies, so you better get your skates on. <laughs> um, but anyway, we came back to Cromwell that night, and it was a big discussion. Everyone was all, oh, my God, it's happened. It's all exciting. Danny's, like, met this guy, and he's really lovely, and there's lots lots of, like, uh, pluses here. Um, so then we went out to the nightclub, and um, we just, I don't know, debriefed, had a couple of fireball shots. It was, like, all in all, the most easiest weekend just so floaty and lovely as opposed to like what happened on Friday that's for sure but I mean I don't know there was a lot of excitement and expectations but I didn't go into this with any sort of like set mind about anything I was so open to whatever was going to be in front of me and I don't even care like for me I've never been attracted to someone's looks it didn't hurt that he was taller than me I'll give him that but um I mean, I was a little bit shocked because I was like, wow, this is actually a guy that I would say, you know, fits what I'm attracted to. But how did she know? Like, you know, if you go on like married at first sight and they just put a bloke in front of you and he's like a midget or whatever <laughs> because they want to do it for TV. Um, it was kind of one of those things where I just stood there like, this is like me putting it out into the universe that this is exactly what I want and he's right in front of me. And I'm just standing there like gobsmacked. Um, so... I've never really been one to be attracted to looks. It's more personality and mental emotion side of things. I really love a really good conversation, like something that's not surface level. I want to have you like know more about me and what I like and, you know, surprise me with things that make me feel warm and fuzzy as opposed to just like thinking, oh, any girl's going to love chocolates and jewelry and flowers. No, take me somewhere where I'm going to see friggin' aeroplanes and V8 supercars and shit that makes noises, you know, because that's what I'm after. Um, so, yeah, it was the most perfect kind of a evening day, really. I really enjoyed myself and you can't wipe the smile off my face, honestly. It's been a whirlwind couple of weeks of meeting a lot of different guys and, like, a very dear friend of me keeps saying, you've got to kiss a lot of frogs till you find your one, Danny. And... I can't even stress how important that is because, you know, when you go into a shopping center and you try on that first pair of jeans and then you always end up going back to that first pair of jeans, even after trying on half the shopping center, this, this was good because even though old mate broke my heart a couple of weeks ago, I'm not going back to that. I'm just like a little bit nervous about things moving forward, but I have this really big, um, quote in my head at the at the moment that's make it's actually making me move forward with everything in my life and that's what is for me will never pass me and I thoroughly just cannot stress this enough if it's meant for you it's going to find its way to you but it's not going to go past you and if you think for a second like you need to stress and worry that you know friendships relationships work situations are all going to go past if you don't grab them. That's not the case. The universe doesn't work like that. If it's for you and it's meant for you, it's not going to go past you. And I get so excited because sometimes in Cromwell, I get really overwhelmed that I'm going to miss out on something if I leave town or I go on a holiday or something, because obviously things move. (laughs) People are doing things all the time. Um, But at the end of the day, You can go and enjoy your life and have adventures and do all the things. But if it's meant for you, it will always be there for you. And you shouldn't stress and worry about people's next steps in life because you just, you would never function. Um, So we'll see what happens with this blind date. And I can't wait to come back to season three and let you know how summer went. From my last conversations with him, he was actively saying, like he was planning things to do over summer with me in the camping sense. And I was panicking because camping is everything that I've ever wanted to do, but I'm not sure I'm a good camper. (laughs) And it's really funny to say that because um, I only said about, I don't know, a month ago, I need to go and buy a tent. And then someone said to me, oh, don't buy a tent, Danny. Just you can borrow one of ours and see if you actually like camping because you don't commit to the equipment until you like it. And I was thinking you know what, that's why my garage is an absolute nightmare right now, because I get so excited, I buy all these things, because I think I'm going to be good at it, and (laughs) I'm not, and now the garage is just full of hobbies that I don't like, (laughs) 
<laughs> Isn't that the worst? Oh my God. Anyway, so all in all, that's how the date went. And um, I have just, I just want to build on that experience. I want to keep meeting people. I want to keep kissing all the frogs and feeling all the feels because <clears throat> I don't know. I feel like I like it. <laughs> and I've never liked it. If you know me, you know that I don't even care about this kind of shit. Honestly, I would rather not have heartbreak and feel all those icky, disgusting feels when someone hurts you and just coast along through life just doing things for you. But my friends right now, they've got like plans for me. I think, you know, a couple of weeks ago and all this shit went down, one of them said to me, Danny, you'll be fine. You'll be fine. Here's the, here's the guy for the blind date. You'll be fine. And I was just sitting here like, oh my God. And one of the big conversations was, Danny, you just need to like have sex with a whole bunch of people so you don't catch feelings because it's the people that go through Tinder date after Tinder date after Tinder date that don't have any emotions or feelings become very like desensitized. Whereas you, you fall in love with a guy after like two, two and a half years, he breaks your heart and your world falls down. And I'm like, because I don't love lightly, like I love deeply. And that was something that was growing and I will not make the first move. I'm old fashioned as all shit. So honestly, it's crazy. And I was saying, oh, I think I just need to go on like a sex retreat and just like get back to like basics and just touch everyone on this retreat and a friend of mine took it as though it was a 10 person gangbang <laughs> I was thinking holy shit no so um yeah you guys I'll be brutally honest there's a lot of weird conversations floating around at the minute and I'm not one to say that I'm very vanilla about life I just I'm six foot three I need to find something I'm comfortable in and then I'll just freaking go for it so watch this space um I hope this has been a bit of an eye-opening podcast for everyone. <laughs> Can you see that I'm literally evolving right in front of you? I'm turning into this like really, I don't know, out there, extroverted kind of loved up maniac that just wants to experience things and share it with everyone else. But I'm shy and freaking out and oh god it's such a mess it's not a mess it's my life it's fine <laughs> anyway I will let you all go this is just a little quickie on my 50th pod I'm super proud of all of us for being here today um no doubt it's gonna pop I have no absolutely no worries about who's gonna hear this it doesn't even matter anymore um but anyway I will be back in February just like I said Season three, let's kick this off with a bang. I should put a poll up and see what you guys think I'm going to get up to over those couple of weeks until February because, wow, if it's going the way that it's been going lately, oh, God, what if I came back on the pod and I was like, I'm engaged and I'm pregnant. Okay, bye. <laughs> Far out. Anyway, love you guys as always. Take care. Have a wonderful summer. Make good choices. You know your girl Danny Dot just might not this year, but um, I will come back with lots of stories and tales to tell. Thanks for stopping by. See you next time.